All right. Hi, everyone. We've got Nick Ranger with us. If you don't know who Nick is, uh, well, you've been hiding in a ro under a rock for a couple of uh, years, or at least uh, five years. She's been super hot. Um, I, I just Googled her, and she's all over the web. Webinars, interviews, uh, articles, this and that. What is going on? Can you, can you tell us uh, why you think you're in so much demand right now? I, I think it's a little bit of a combination of luck and hard work. Um, to be honest, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love, I love learning. And I think if you follow the thread of curiosity, you can meet people, you can have wonderful conversations and I'm never afraid to ask silly questions because at the end of the day, if, um, if I don't know, then there's gotta, there's gotta be, you know, a rubber meets the road kind of approach. So <laughs> I just, I just love meeting people and finding out new things. And the more that I do, the better. Um, I feel like I get equipped and I just add more things into my little toolbox. So, yeah. So how long, how long have you been in SEO now? Seven years. Seven years. So I was two years off. Um, but probably <laughs> two years you were probably just building it up still, right? Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, yeah. My first introduction was an internship role um, doing SEO for Predictor. Um, with Clayton Cross and um, and friends, and that was um, that was a real kind of um, test of the metal. There wasn't necessarily a lot of um, there wasn't really anyone to ask, and so I think a lot of that came from a lot of self learning and kind of trying to figure out things. And naturally, like if I'm if I'm doing a job, I I just want to figure out how to do that the best that I can. And I found that. Um, like the more that I started to really just pull at the tapestry of, of um, search engine optimization, the more that I found that I was Googling things and reading things outside of work hours and kind of getting a little bit obsessed about it. And I thought, well, if, um, if your interests are a good reflection of what you like about just the world, <laughs> then maybe there's really something in that. So I decided to really, really pursue that and really just follow that down the, down the, rabbit hole if you will and um now i'm here it's good it's good i'm just i'm just so happy because for so many years in, you know since the 2000 early 2000s um i felt that australia was underrepresented globally on the international mm. stage as far as seo goes there were a few mm. few well-known names doing good work and uh you know when i see your name pop up um everywhere and it's just just makes me really proud um, so yeah, keep up, keep up that good work. Um, that now, means a lot. Uh, thank you. <laughs> the the reason uh, that you're here with me is that you're the first name that um, popped in as a technical technical SEO um, specialist. Um, when it comes to big, complicated SEO projects, I know of course you can deal with the little small potatoes type of clients, but I know you can you can handle a big one when it comes across. Um, mm. And one of my good friends, uh, Marcus uh, Toba, he's uh, recently joined SEMrush and he's been given a task of creating a magical solution for enterprise SEO that um, solves, it doesn't replace any existing platform, um, but it can solve all these problems that are currently bothering enterprise SEO people on, on many levels. And I got so excited with because they just gave him, it's like writing a blank check saying, you know, here you go, make something good. And it's wow, not, it's not necessarily, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily part of the existing suite or um, he hasn't been given a spec or anything like that. It's just a, such an exciting opportunity. And I thought, well, I, I want to be part of this in, in a small way that I can contribute by inviting uh, people who are deep, into complex, uh, complicated uh, enterprise SEO projects, technical SEO, whatever comes along, that they can give some ideas and feedback to to Marcus to hopefully inspire and um, I guess in a in some way influence him to build the tool. Because tell let's tell him what we want, right? I already told him all sorts of things that that mm -hmm. trouble me. I gave him a whole list. He has a task of deciding which ones to implement, what to roll with first, what are the what are the core core issues. 
Now, in his views after the first interview, we kind of distilled because I asked him, what, what's, what are people going to say your software is all about? You know, like um, Ahrefs, people say, you go there to check your links. Um, and SEMrush, you check your competitors' traffic. We know that those tools do a lot more, but um, mm. oh, what do you do? What do you use Moz for? Oh, DAPA. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, people people will call you one thing, and what is that? What is that going to be about? And he actually said, um, "I'm solving people and processes," and also he said, "I'm creating an answer engine." And then the rest of the session extrapolated on those concepts which seem a little bit vague at, at when you just mentioned them but i think you're getting yeah i think mm -hmm. you're getting an idea of what that is what that is all about so with with that mm -hmm. why don't we just dive into the the subject of big complex seo uh projects and mm -hmm. i think one good starting point would be what are your personal tools that you use starting from the most frequently used the favorite tools and then down to everything else what do you use and why? Yeah, awesome. Okay. Um, so I'll use Screaming Frog um, mainly Number because one. it can do so much um, with <laughs> so little. Um, and I've been using Screaming Frog, I think, for my entirety of my SEO career. Um, yeah, so that will be for crawling and looking at link architecture and looking at crawl issues and things like that. Um, also using their awesome API, uh, just a ton of different things. Um, I'll use SEMrush for keyword research um, because they have a massive database. Um, I'll use Ahrefs for looking at link profiles and um, just looking at the different tiers and also with their competitor research as well. Uh, I find that super useful. Um, I'll use Spotify for large enterprise level websites. Um, so I can be able to leverage log file um, analysis, be able to look at um, pages that are outside of the index. Um, golly gee. Um, I'll use uh, SEO, for, um, X, SEO for Excel um, to be able to do just like spot testing and redirect plans and all kinds of other really, really great things just to look at things really, really super quickly um, in Sheets. Um, I'll use monday.com as a um, means of just organizing myself, <laughs> Gmail, yeah, that's Slack, um, and with some, um, you know, with some particular types of clients, Bughood and um, uh, Adam. Yeah, I think that's pretty much like the main the main array of tools. There's like a couple of like outliers where you know some clients will be on some different um, different tool set. But otherwise, yeah, that and like your standard Google Analytics, GTM, Search Console. Yeah, Data Studio. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, like when when you need to have like you know custom things be able to be built um, for tracking um, segment analysis. Yeah, Data Studio. Yeah, so that's a nice list. Mm. Maybe we should give a little. I think that was about ten, just over ten tools. Um, yeah, I think if I were to really consolidate it, um, I didn't also acknowledge all the Chrome extensions that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Ah. But again, that might be a bit of an exhaustive list, and I'm just kind of like running this off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think people might be just like writing it down quickly, searching it. Yeah, but yeah. So with all those with all those two tools, um, collectively, what are they all missing? Just don't worry about. Can it be implemented? Let's let's hit him with a really difficult task. Just magic, you know. If if you could magically mm -hmm. solve your problems dealing with not just not just crawling, indexing, you know, log file analysis, the the technical geekery, but also the way your work integrates with the rest of the team and how it in, how it translates into actionable items and gets done mm -hmm. on clients end and all these things. Could consider everything and mm -hmm. think about the the biggest things that the existing tools that you use currently are missing, and it would be like super good to have it um, in the context of very big complex SEO projects. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So I work with a whole team of people. I'm, I'm super lucky. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, I work with Studio Hawk. 
we're the largest SEO agency in um, the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and we got a, like a slew of different awards and things like that behind us. But the thing that I love the most about working with my team is that I have a team. Um, in previous places, I it was like just myself and maybe one other person, um, no matter how large or how complex the project was. So um, <laughs> a lot of that really, really had to come with like really, really um, good organizational and um, project management. I think when whenever I, I think about this stuff, I have to really take it into the context of like um, not just myself and but also the team and also how that does convey to the client. Because taking a really, really big step back from the complex problems and things like that, um, buy-in is such a massive thing that needs to be communicated first. Um, no matter how um, important the project and like I'll, I'll use like server-side rendering as an example, one that um, <laughs> I'm literally going through one of my enterprise level clients at the moment. Um, we have a really, really great symbiosis, a really, really great relationship, but at the same time, they really never saw the impact. They never really saw um, the needs. And we're talking to development teams and maybe even some third party tool companies about um, different methodologies of how we can be able to work together. The thing that it all came back to was, I don't understand it, it seems complex, it seems expensive, and I don't really see what that's gonna be able to do for us um, in the short and long term. So a lot more emphasis gets placed on us, the SEO um, team, to be able to really, really highlight the, the potential and the opportunity. Now, I think with a lot of the tools that we use and leverage every day, um, no matter how awesome they are, a lot of them are basically just telling us what the problem is. And then a lot of the time, like they might offer some solutions, but again, with everything in SEO, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so many different um, you know, variables. It's kind of like chemistry. There is always that like, this is the answer with the exception of this, 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 this and this. And it's almost like an, uh, like an exhaustive list. So. Um, it's a really, really hard solve, I think, for tool companies to to figure out like the best ways to be able to do this. And I think some like companies like SEMrush, for example, try to help with um, giving like solutions with this. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's there's all kinds of like intrinsic flaws in the way that their crawling works and the way the way that it understands the architecture. Because a lot of that is a very much a human element of going in and understanding like how it all works, how it all needs to be put together. And also to whether or not that that's even the right architecture for them at all. Um, so going all the way back to that, I really do think that if um, a tool company were to be able to exemplify the impacts on maybe even like the bottom line, that would be neat. <laughs> Um, but again, a lot of that really goes back on us, the SEOs, um, to be really strong communicators in this. Um, and I think, again, like I, there's no salespeople at our company. There's no account directors or um, people that don't really, we're all on the tools. Yeah. So for us, it's basically um, the hard skills and the soft skills really combined into, you know, every individual that we really need to communicate to be able to explain really, really hard concepts simply um, to people who are, you know, maybe very digitally naive. I think that's the biggest, the biggest issue rather than what the issues are. Well, you said a lot of things and here's what I understood. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to, I want to make sure that we are on the same page. Mm -hmm. This, this framework clearly communicates the benefits of proposed work to the client to get it going on their end. Is that, yeah, does that so sound right? It's, it's I, like I, try the, to, I'll, um, I try to ultra compress what is, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, I think so. Because um, the way the way that I, I usually try and work is, um, okay, there is a, a, a massive issue with the way that um, you know, the, the way that the site is, like where is the opportunities on the table for you to be able to take leverage with? And that could be coming from a technical perspective. It could be coming from a, a if technical is not necessarily like the most pressing thing on the table, it might be coming from a content perspective, or it also might be just an opportunity with, um, with, with just the way that the website has been set up from an authoritative perspective. So for me, it's kind of tr just trying to like understand like what are the kinds of things that are really, really going to move the needle 
and then going back to them and saying, okay, who are the teams that are responsible for this? What um, can you as a company be able to do to be able to basically project manage and get these issues resolved? Who do I need to <laughs> talk to um, to be able to explain these things, to be able to work with them and get these things really in the mind's eye of um, a priority list? So it will really, really come back to that. So is it like the, the proposed work, is it even going to be possible to be executed on there? And, and often I find there are mm. things that are completely unrelated to outcomes or capability. It's just political. I worked for a fairly large yeah. um, website that um, for no reason uh, implemented React.js um, website. Actually, there was a new and shiny, right? <laughs> no, that, was, that was the reason they had a they had a, 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 a tiny little section of the website that required the functionality as mm -hmm. part of their sales funnel, and then the rest of the website was the blog, um, the sales pages, the FAQs, and things like that that had, had no absolutely no need. It could have just been plain HTML or a WordPress site mm -hmm. or something really basic. Um, so we spent months. Um, just trying to negotiate and persuade, um, and we, 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 you know, we offered a few solutions um, to to help Google render and interpret the HTML. And um, but every time, every deployment, you know, that would be like, oh, we forgot this, we forgot that. There was always little little things popping up, um, and yeah. uh, it was it was a real real struggle. And the the whole time, I felt like I had to tiptoe around uh, certain matters such as you know their mm. uh, their chief technical person would have been offended if I said something in one way that makes mm. them look bad and the CEO yeah. wanted to know why things are not moving along and I'm trying to explain to the CEO why things are going slow without really saying why things are going slow because of the technical yeah. uh, person on there and really being the bottleneck in the in the whole in the whole process um that sounds like a challenge um i don't know how that's going to be solved that's really we need psychologists on this task <laughs> <laughs> to Almost. be honest like that's that's more of my concern um than even the solves because um you know like I'll, I'll get i'll get super granular as to like what scripts like what caching rules um you know what um what we can be able to do to to be able to get past these these kinds of challenges but again um like in an instance like that again I, i've had that experience as well i've actually even said to the, like the the head developer um can i please have your direct phone number because i'm going to call you <laughs> i'm going to call you before this meeting because you know, we have to work together. We have to have a relationship. And I'm not here to make you look bad. I'm just here to be able to drive a result because I really care about the results for this client because um, if the client is successful, then we're successful as a business. And that's all that matters. And to be really honest, I don't care about much else. So in instances, like I've called, like, um, you know, I've called up the, the head of development team and said, like, look, we've got a meeting um, in a couple of days. And right now I just have no idea where anything's at because there's not been a lot of communication. Um, but this is kind of really, really the pressing things. Now, what, um, you know, what do I have to, like, is there is something I can do to be able to be helpful? Um, like, what is, is it being deprioritized from internally? Like, is there something that I'm not really aware of that maybe I can kind of, um, you know, say in the meeting that will just really, really help highlight um, the, your roadblocks and maybe even get some more funding or get some more resources to your department um, to be able to put this because again I, I'm trying to work with you <laughs> and doing that I think um, well on a communication standpoint like yeah it's it's put a lot more time um, on that but but um, it, it is it is a team effort um, and on the on the flip side you know, where I've tried to do that and it's even kind of been a little bit more caustic because now um, actually I had someone turn around and basically tell me like, um, don't call me and um, try and tell me how to do my job. And that's always yeah, a really, really insecurity. hard place. Yeah, that's a really, really hard place to start with. And 
um, you know, I try and speak in a way that's really just like, mate, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be as sincere with you as possible. Um, it's not personal. It's not business. Sorry. It's not personal. It's business. And I don't want you to, to look bad and I don't want to, you know, create roadblocks and, and headaches and tensions in meetings. Like that's not what I'm here to do. Um, so, you know, just help like work with me. And in some instances, it's just not being able to work out. And so for me, it's been more of like, okay, um, I'm going to have to say the hard truth because that's now my responsibility as the person that is the SEO consultant in the room. I'm going to say that as diplomatically as I can, but at the same time, if something's going to go ahead, then I feel like it's a responsibility to let them know to be able how to be able to risk um, mitigate that risk to the company because I think that it's going to either directly impact traffic keywords and at the end of the day, the bottom line, which is revenue. So that's kind of where it kind of comes back to. And so, and when it's like enterprise level um, businesses um, and SEO, it's really, really hard to sort of like extrapolate like what that looks like and give estimates and all kinds of other stuff. Um, and I've gone down the road path before with looking at Google Analytics and taking two years of data and doing that and then COVID hit. And I was like, all these models don't work. <laughs> Um, but even just something to be able to, to, to say to even like the most hardened, um, like again, managers who maybe just look at their PPC budgets and look at their SEO and kind of wonder this with the same kind of KPIs, why they don't work, um, you know, what those kinds of roadblocks are from a revenue standpoint. So, um, if there was a magic, like, you know, solve all tool that would be able to navigate that, <laughs> Then yeah, absolutely. Um, sign me up. That would be absolutely incredible. But I really do think that um, at the end of the day, uh, it's a very human issue. It's a yeah. really human issue. Like you're going into an enterprise level company. They a lot of the time they are super bureaucratic, um, and they're just kind of trying to like figure out like how do I look good in front of my boss? Um, and maybe it might not even be about the results at all. It might be completely an ego thing. So I feel like being in this space um, and being in this space for, I think, like nearly six years, um, because again, like when I started, um, I think my very, very first enterprise level client was 40 Winks. And um, I loved working on that project. And I'm really, really proud of that project as well. Um, but again, I had to talk to all of their, um, all of their shareholders in a meeting and basically tell them that um, the way that they approach selling beds may not be correct because of the research that I've just done. Um, and that's a really, really um, hard conversation to to go into when, um, you know, how do, how do you be able to communicate that in a way that is both helpful um, and um, something that will change their minds and not like get them to completely just shut down with like, who on earth is this? you know, scrawny little Asian girl, like coming into this room and telling me how <laughs> to do, how, how to like, you know, the industry that I've been in for 20, 30 years. And um, great, great um, story with that one. Um, they did actually take that advice on board. And um, now instead of like putting everything um, with filters with just brand, now they have bed sizes. <laughs> the actual dimensions, like how it actually fits into a room. So there are, there are some really, really great wins there. Well done. I mean, it's um, it's sometimes that uh, I'm I will make a recommendation in front of in front of the stakeholders. Mm. Uh, once I was in in a setup with uh, with an entire senior team. Just imagine a a, a whole roundtable of old men, um, not easily impressed, and I'm just like, <laughs> uh, what did you say? Scrawny young SEO in front of them. Um, and, yeah. uh, and I'm trying to make an impression and mm. I thought I, I did a really good job presenting the benefits, but what I didn't understand is that they didn't care. I, I actually came up with a, with a way of transforming the business entirely by offering, mm. um, offering their service based business, um, a point of, uh, point of sale solution when they go out to do jobs, mm. which they didn't have. It was, it was creating enormous friction. Um, and this is nothing to do with SEO. It's just something that I've discovered in data, like you, you, you mentioned. 
and um, they yeah. said we don't care. We just want to sell more franchises. We don't care what happens on the on the transaction level on the businesses once they get the yeah. That's it. Yeah. So you have to understand so the politics of it <laughs> as well. And uh, sometimes it'll mm. be about somebody's ego, like the you know the IT guy is very guarded yeah. about their little domain, um, mm. or, or sometimes afraid for their job. Sometimes you're speaking to the management, upper management, or even the stakeholders, and they're just not mm. interested in what you have to say. And um, it's it's a minefield to navigate. But Marcus Stolper, if you're re- listening to this, pay attention. Um, Nick Ranger just invented the diplo- SEO diplomacy concept. I don't think that anyone's ever mentioned that before. Um, you dropped the, the word diplomacy, and I like that. SEO diplomacy, even if it's not like a magic button to solve it. I think that's like a that's a section, definitely within a tool or, or, or a framework. Um, how, how to use the information, what to do with it, I have no idea. Mm. But um, uh, if anyone can do something with that, that's that's Marcus. I'm, I'm pretty sure he can, he can take advantage if it's, of that. If it's helpful to kind of start with maybe even that mentality, um, but then to break it down into um, I always like with with any project, any SEO project, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, um, like a small little um, local business all the way up to like a multi franchise um, or, uh, you know, international business um, that spans many countries. It doesn't really matter. Um, each one of those will have their goals and they'll have like their departments and they'll have their KPIs. So I always um, right at the get go. Um, understand first the the goals of the business and then understand their workflows and how they'd be able to go through and achieve that on their end. Then I'll figure out who the teams are. Um, and then this just basically tells me um, some really, really important details. What the, the end goal is at the end of the day um, and then who's there responsible for those things, how they sort of measure success to get towards those goals and then it just becomes like um, almost like a like just simplifying all of these complex equations into just equilibrium. So um, if you think about it in more like an equilibrium sense, it's like okay, well, um, you know, you'll have one third, one plus one third plus one third equals one, and then you think, okay, well, where are the imbalances on this? If one third equals like maybe technical, another third equals content, another third um, equals authority. Um, like that kind of like offsite kind of, um, you know, sphere, then if there is an imbalance of one of those things, therefore it will not reach that goal because of that thing. And so then it's just like, okay, well, um, for me to be able to break that down, um, I need to break it into a priority list of all the things that I think from a, from my experience and my expertise of what's going to actually move the needle. And then I'll break it down even simpler, more simple than that into what it is, how it impacts your SEO um, and how to then explain it to a developer. So That's I've really kind of good. got the concept of um, what what the what the 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 issue is, what the impact is, and how it will um, affect you know <laughs> with both like the bottom line and also with search engines. Um, and then there's the the solve element with um, communicating this to a development team. Um, so that I've kind of like always have got like my my list of things that i'm wanting to do and then it just becomes like well you know who do i who do i need to talk to now to be able to convince that these are the these are the priorities that we're putting through are their priorities now because i need to always go back to that goal of when we first started working on this your goal was to increase franchises or to increase um the amounts of sales from your from dyson vacuum cleaners or any, any number one of things that um, that they want to be able to achieve. So I've always got that in mind. And like even like I even love to even have like you know dollar values. Hey, um, it is your your goal um, to be able to increase your revenue from a, from your organic channels by forty percent um, th- for the, the end of the year. Whether or not I think that that's necessarily an achievable goal. I always say the like a little bit of a caveat. It's like we want to work towards there, but I can't necessarily guarantee we're going to work there because I really need to be able to make sure that all these things are there and are aligned, um, and we can be able to break down these goals into smaller milestones. So let's 
let's work together. Let's be able to get this on, on board and we can be creative with the solutions on how we get there. Um, but again, I'm always going to be your, you know, your friend in your, in your corner and saying like, whether like how much it's going to impact you um, and what we can be able to do as a team to be able to leverage this. So that's kind of like where I'll start from. And that's kind of like then the methodology of how one could project manage this. Um, and there's always like, there's always like this, um, this thing in the back of my mind that says like, you are the expert, you need to be the one really helping to guide this conversation. If it starts to come back and they say like, okay, we really love that, but we want you to do this now, then that's a bit of an imbalance of, of that dynamic now. Now you're being told how to do my job. <laughs> and yeah. like, if it's a great idea, I don't mind. Um, but if it's not, if it's completely, um, um, you know, down, down the rabbit hole, a total tangent that they're just getting us to do, I don't know, like op optimize all the images and replace them. And we're the ones actually going in and, and um, optimizing and replacing them when they've got um, all kinds of other technical issues where, I don't know, maybe like 40% of their site isn't it being indexed. And yes, that has been a <laughs> rel relatively recent case that I've been working on. Um, then it, it really, really has to come back to like, yeah, we can do that. But in terms of what's actually going to be able to um, move the needle for you guys, if this is your goal, then it's going to take us a lot longer to get there. We could do that, but it's not the, the, the thing that is burning on the table right now. I want yep. to be able to, to look after these things. And again, education really is so important. Um, I might spend sometimes like up to 60, 70% of my entire time, um, some months or like in, and resources just on educating teams, going out, um, meeting development teams, um, having meetings with the GM, with the, um, the practice manager of wherever, um, and, and communicating the, the same thing, but in different ways, depending on who I'm talking to. So that's the kind of like work that I think really, really know, needs to go in to be able to figure out like who you're working with, what the kind of things that they as individuals like see as value and, and basically playing to that so that you can be able to get things across. Because at the end of the day, um, it's my, my, my butt on the line too. If I don't get results, if there are things that really, really hamper um, that, then I feel like on a personal level, like that impacts like my reputation and, and like Stu Hawk's reputation. So yeah, when the it's, client is successful, we're successful. <laughs> yeah, it's always, it's always like that. I mean, um, no matter, even when, when we're dealing with the smaller projects, you still want to put your best effort in. You always like when you're client facing, you always want to, mm. um, it's, it's ego, ego of, for us mm. SEOs. It's a big thing. Um, you're just proud in your work and you want to, you want to create the best possible result. But, yeah, um, cause it's, it's, it takes a long time. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it takes a long time to go through and to, and to crawl and to analyze and to, you know, find these little things like, you know, pouring through, um, you know, lighthouse reports or going to like Chrome developer tools and finding like these little things like, oh, oh my God, there's an iframe. No wonder. No wonder this is yeah. having so many issues. Like anything underneath that will, will not even be considered. Um, yeah. And then going back and then explaining that or, uh, you know, all kinds of other things that, um, you know, that might might come into the conversation. And just knowing that like, okay, I've, I've, I'm going to be talking to the client about iframes today. Um, but at the same time, they have not even uh, any idea how to, um, you know, send through a calendar invite. Um, <laughs> How do I explain? Something in the code does not work. Therefore, no results or less results. So What's let's code? fix this. I will I will figure this out. Um, I will have a chat with your developer and I'll just let you know whether that's been fixed or not. Um, and then we can maybe like, you know, measure, measure this, like, you know, uh, like one, two, three, six, 12 months down the track, um, like the cumulative results from all this work. Much, much of it, what you've been um, covering, um, and it was absolute delight to watch you um, drill from a single core topic, and you just exploded into so many tangents, and then brought it back in. Um, there's, there's just so many, so much value that you've just given, 
to everyone who's involved in the enterprise SEO. But to me, one thing strikes me is that during the onboarding process with very large projects, we can't use the same induction template that we use for your mid-sized e-commerce clients. It has to be a conf- completely different thing. We don't have we don't have that one. It's more of a custom, you know, custom per project. Now, if Marcus mm. was to build um, build a um, wizard style SEO induction um, questionnaire for new clients, they could they could mm. have you know who's who within the company section. That mm. this is the CTO, this is the CFO, this is the chief developer. These are the his minions. This is uh, the content person, etc. So you map the entire team and you could stipulate with a drop down who's technical level you know um expert intermediate mm. uh, novice absolutely clueless um you could then map all the software and tools that they use internally how they communicate okay mm-hmm. drop down communication slack um jira okay so you basically go through and in, in your induction process, you map all this out so that there's no mm. questions um, in the end. I guess if this becomes almost like a CMS in a sense that you, from your first meeting, you get you get a weird vibe from chief developer on their end. It's like, ooh, uh, this guy's a bit guarded, you know, like, ooh. You know, so <laughs> you, you put those notes, you put those notes mm. in the system for your team to understand and adjust their their approach. Uh, so this person is outgoing, this person is introverted, mm. uh, extroverted, guarded, you know, th- this, that. So we're going a little bit um, uh, advanced now. I don't know if this is possible to be implemented in the first iteration of software, mm. but our job here is just to, uh, I guess, brainstorm and see what, uh, what we can come up with. And we've come up with mm. a lot. And, um, it would be nice to see these uh, problems solved. Now, when you were talking about, you were talking about prioritizing work, making decisions. Mm-hmm. With question one, how do you surface insight in a notion of data? What what what's your what's your process? So that's part one. How do you mm-hmm. how do you surface insights? And once you do, how do you decide what the priorities are? I'm I'm, I'm having. Uh, a guess what that might be but I just want to hear it from you yeah absolutely so going through Google Analytics is really really great search console that will kind of give me a bit of an idea of you know what we're working with Um, but at the same time it's it's kind of like a like a lot of like little different pieces of information that will tell me probably the most and I think um, one of the things that I've really had to to communicate to again my teams of like <laughs> so this is the process but then this is also the way that i do things which is kind of now a little bit more instinctual like i'll click through um, a website i'll um, try out and actually purchase something from the website um, yep. then i'll have a look at um you know how that gets interacted with the real-time data or um, in some cases like i've actually bought things um from websites before because it gives me Again, I, I don't mind online shopping, it but at the same real. time, when you yeah, do that, it, it, it is real. super real. Yeah, and I feel like the the trap that we sometimes fall into is like it it's just completely just like I'm just looking at like um like just spreadsheets and numbers and like it doesn't tell me anything. I just go in and and just you know I guess title tags and meta descriptions and heading structure will be the thing that I focus on today. Um, it is a living, breathing organism websites. Um, people look at it, people input into it, people read it, people digest it, or people will absolutely ignore it. Um, so I think the best way that I go through with any of my clients is actually just trialing it out for myself. Um, and just try to like think about if I didn't know this business, if I'd never had a chat with them, firstly, do I understand what the business does <laughs> as, a, a, as a first point of call? Um, I can't tell you how many websites, and you would have probably seen this as well, um, particularly sometimes even at this, um, if we're talking about SaaS products, they do not explain simply what they do. Um, oh, they're in the their own bubble, that. in their own jargons, and uh, yeah. they have no idea what customers are searching for or wanting. Yeah, absolutely. Or like I will, I'll be like, oh, okay, so 
they've now said to me that, that one, one of their biggest things is their project management tools for, for EPCMs. Cool. Um, where do I find out more information about that? Quick, 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 quick. I can't find it. I can't find anything. I don't think they've even mentioned it on the website. Um, but this is like their primary audience. Um, okay, cool. Like, so a lot of the times, like, you know, many enterprises focus almost entirely on that bottom of the funnel, like just around like that transactional kind of thing. So they'll, they'll only think about that kind of content, or they'll only think about creating like more generic pages to make it simple for people, but it doesn't actually do the job. So I think just starting off again on more of like intuitive basis, start from there. And a lot of your assumptions will probably be backed up in Google Analytics and Search Console. I think a lot of this is highly intuitive. Like going back and, and saying like, okay, so, um, you know, I'm looking, well, first of all, <laughs> probably like, you know, um, the gold funnels haven't been set up at all, but, you know, like there is no phone calls or there is no um, form submissions or there's um, there's a massive bounce rate on these particular pages that have like these form submissions because they've completely gotten rid of their menu structure on these particular landing pages. Um, again, like assumption, check the analytics, probably confirmed, go back, explain the concept, have all like a couple of these screenshots from their analytics to, to be able to, um, to be able to look at this stuff and say like, this isn't necessarily like a direct answer, but there is sure um, a, a strong correlate, um, strong correlation that this is probably what the answer is. I'm I'm not looking at this from a CRO perspective because that's not really what we're what we're talking about in this instance. But there are some <laughs> there are some really really fundamental issues here from a content perspective. How you've actually um, you know written and laid out your site. So maybe we need to be able to have and again this goes back to like my equilibrium thing. Um, maybe yeah. from a technical perspective, they're not actually the worst in the world. But from a content perspective, no one understands what who they are, what they do, or, and there is not enough content on this website for search engines or for users to contextually understand um, any of the, the things that want, they're wanting to put across. So I'm going to go back to them and say, well, um, yeah, from a technical perspective, there are some things that we can be able to go in, be able to optimize and be able to help. Definitely, because I see some pages that aren't in, in, in the index that you might want to have in the index, and we can solve those things. But for a much bigger, longer-term solution, let's have a content strategy that actually identifies this. And now, who in the team do I have to talk to? <laughs> who in the team is the best to talk to about like having this content um, actually be written? And then we'll set up training sessions with them. Um, we'll go through and map out like a whole um, content strategy that might be three, six, in, in some cases, they like the 12 month kind of scope. Um, and then let's just go in and say like, okay, let's do X per month. Let's do um, X even per week. Um, and let's have something um, you know, to really, really help it, like showcase that growth as well. So having an internal link, str internal link strategy, having um, uh, like even an image um, naming convention, um, with all of these things and look at like what kind of um, structured data um, for some rich snippet opportunities we can be able to get. Um, so we have everything from the engagement, education, research, evaluation, um, and that comparison kind of thing, all the way to that transactional kind of intent of um, landing on those key pages that they want people to be able to buy on. One, one of my questions was um, about you being a a technical SEO geek and whether you um, sometimes admit, no, nah, this site's good, there's nothing to do um, without falling into temptation of uh, geeking out and all the technical stuff. Um, so you basically already answered that, that question. You consider a broader picture, as I understand. And if the site looks pretty decent, mm. you, try, you try to prioritize work towards what's needed, content authority and the rest. Did I get that right? And, and has there been many projects where um, you look at it and you go, well, this is a pretty good setup. There's not much to optimize. We could, the site could be a little bit faster. Co-web vitals, pretty decent, you know. Nah, mm. let's let's do something else. Do you actually do that? Or is there always something yeah. to fix? 
there's always I, I always feel like there's always something that can be done better um but whether or not that that's going to have like the 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 largest impact on their site as a whole um that's maybe that that doesn't actually solve the problem um because i think like when everyone was going absolutely mad crazy about core web vitals like core web vitals can be awesome um and you know site speed is also you know um super impactful for sure but at the end of the day like i like i, I look at i look at um you know who's actually in the top one to ten um for a lot of the key um the, the key types of topics that we're wanting the client to be associated with and do they have the the best like speed like <laughs> you know speed results do they have the best core web vitals no um, but what they do have is X, Y, Z. So for me, it's it's like, well, this is a nice to have, but this will be future um, when we've when we've been able to solve these other types of problems. And when we're looking at, okay, like now we're in maybe two year two of working with this client. What are the kinds of things that we need to do? Maybe we will start to look at a lot of the legacy code, and maybe we will start to like you know have a discussion with them about. Um, maybe a lot of the third party um, scripts that maybe we could be able to host on a CDN or be able to have somewhere um, somewhere else so that you can be able to have like a lot leaner load time. Um, I think, it, again, it really, really is dependent on what is the thing that's gonna like actually provide the results of the client. If you start from there, then it goes back to that. Um, Cause again, like, I, I love to nerd out about SEO um, and I chose technical SEO because I find that um, content is super subjective. Um, whereas technical SEO, you can kind of find almost a, those beautiful little like, here's a problem, here's a solution. You know, if you, if you want the results, do the technical implementations. Um, and for me and my brain, that is just such a nice little simple, like, you know, closing of the loop. So that's why I love technical SEO. Um, but at the same time, um, I also know that, you know, solving all these like amazing edge case things might not actually be the thing that helps a client it, like for the short and the long, for the short term, as well as the longer term right now, if there is like a ton of other different issues, because you can have the most um, optimized, um, you know, efficient sites um, that looks awesome, but nobody understand what it, what it does, and there's not enough content to be able to contextualize what they are actually trying to be able to do for search engines. You can't publish a turd. <laughs> <laughs> so again, <laughs> I think I think in equilibriums because um, again, that's just how my brain really really helps to be able to 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 solve these kinds of um, you know large complex issues into really really simple things for me, um, so that I don't get um lost in the weeds um and i don't take the clients or the development team or you know someone that i'm working with down the rabbit hole with me and confuse everybody um because it, like i've done that in the past you know I'm, I'm not saying that i'm perfect i've absolutely done that where i've i've gone through and said like oh let's look at solving all these site architecture problems um like all of these all of these url strings are just numbers and, and letters and it's just an absolute mess so maybe i'll do a crawl and we can pull out all the metadata and we can be able to use that to be able to inform like a better um url structure we can be able to do that but that wasn't the thing that was actually going to really, really help them <laughs> that wasn't the thing that they wanted either um and so yeah that would be a great thing to maybe work towards in the future but they had so many other problems that were so much more pressing that i just didn't see because i i from a technical perspective um and even from an academic perspective it was cool it was a yeah. really cool problem to look at trying to solve um and like it, it it really just confused everybody when i said went into the meetings and said like Hey, let's let's talk about information architecture. Yeah. <laughs> I got the I got like <laughs> glass eyes and like confused looks and like you know people just being like just look smart and we will get through it. Um, yeah. Thank you very much <laughs> for your presentation. That was nice. Um, we're gonna take a short break for lunch and I'm gonna pretty much forget about everything you just said because I didn't understand it um, and I didn't really understand like what it's gonna be able to do. So I've done that before and I've learned from, um, I feel like I've learned from those mistakes that um, 
again, you, I just really need to be able to like look at things that are, are the things that are going to move the needle the quickest. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent agree with you there. And um, mm -hmm. I, I fully support and understand, you know, the, the beauty of completing um, a site optimization in a technical way, all the things that were, that were wrong are now right. Mm. There's something. There's something beautiful about that. And uh, what did you, what you, you? You did this with your hands. You said that completes me, or you said something. It kind of closes yeah. the loop. Closes the loop. It does. <laughs> Very namaste. It does. <laughs> I love that. And <laughs> when those things happen, um, it's 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 like. I feel like, again, like SEO is very much a long-term game and we don't really get too many of those short-term kind of like solutions or those kinds of wins. And I'll take them wherever I can get it. So if I can, um, you know, go into a room with a development team and talk to them about server-side rendering and, um, you know, how like by default it's all client-side, what that means for them and showing them um, like literally in real time what that looks like from, um, trying to replicate these things, uh, how a search engine would be able to see that and having like the content team like be gobsmacked that none of their content is actually um, appropriately rendered um, and none of their heading structures that they spent time on are being rendered and none of the content that they have on any of their category pages is being rendered and just looking at their faces and then communicating to them what that does to them as a business. And then we'll show in the Google Analytics, you know, if anyone was unconvinced, yeah, unconvinced, yes, that's the word. Yeah. They're yeah. not convinced by this, you know, what the what what that looks like post launch from a revenue perspective. The same types of pages, like really the same types of content, but now everything is client side rendered, and what that actually looks like from from a revenue perspective. And in that instance, they were down um, month on month um, by one, sorry, year on year um, by one point five million. Um, and that, that has a massive impact. So going through that and then, you know, then communicating like, oh, well, you know, maybe we need to be a little bit aware of like, what is server side and what, um, and how are we able to do that? And maybe, um, let's have a conversation that I'm not asking for everything to be server side rendered, um, <laughs> you know, either on your server, on the user's browser, um, like when we execute, execute JavaScript server side um to be able to like you know have that in the initial html um and then prioritizing the scripts that they actually need and identifying that with them like opening this up with de the developers tools and like you know going to the coverage uh, report and showing them all of these things that are actually um that they don't need and maybe we can serve these um in cdns and you know um like maybe like let's let's work towards like one megabyte of like like a healthy effective page um to be less than that um and yeah like prioritizing that user experience over all those bulky 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 scripts yeah yeah now the the process the process you described of of um closure of of completing a good technical seo project reminds me of when i um compose a new track and some days I'll start it, I'll get excited, it'll be the peak of creativity, mm -hmm. and then I'll mess it all up and screw it in the end, and I'll just close my computer and feel bleh. Mm. But some days, I'll spend a whole day on it, get it just right, I'll get it to, I'll do my arrangements, I'll master the track, and I'll export it and upload it to SoundCloud. Mm, just the perfect closure and just the perfect um, feeling. So, yeah, I see artwork behind you. Are you an artist as well as a musician? Uh, yeah, I was actually really, really relating quite hard to, um, you know, creating and producing and um, publishing music. Uh, yeah, this is actually something I painted as well. Beautiful. Um, but I'm a classically trained violinist and I've been working with bands, gosh, I think for the last 15 years. Um, and they they have a lot of likeness to technical SEO. You can be able to have um, the most complex, the most like wonderfully intricate songs, um, but they might take two years to be able to produce. And if yeah. you're so interested in every tiny little detail, it will never actually have a point of completion. 
because no. you want to go back to your snares and like make them sound a little bit like more open or like um you know play around with the sound wave and and you know create that nice crisp cream queenness or um might play around and spend like weeks on different plugins or different things um <laughs> for different like sound effect pedals on just like really really small little tombas of things um you can get spend so hours on it. In, into it yeah um but I think, again, um, I think the best, the best things in life operate within parameters. Um, and I think um, even giving yourself some rules like, okay, um, I'm going to create from start to finish in one day, um, produce a song. Whether or not that that is like good or bad, I'm just going to do this as like a personal challenge um, and just get stuff done. And yeah. Like I actually did this, <laughs> did this um, with my with with myself, um, and then I found like within oh, within only really maybe a couple of months, I had produced like hundred like just tons of work because I would make something and then I get faster into it, or I'd just explore an idea and be like, cool, I'm just gonna have like little three minute um, you know kind of like pop ballad type so like um, material. And I'll have, I'll just have these like explore a simple idea and it'll go along the same kind of like structure of introduction, bridge, chorus, bridge, chorus, you know, um, outro. Um, and that might be, that might be that, or I might change where the bridge is or anything like that. Um, but yeah, again, parameters and having these rules are a really, really great place to start because if you can really impact your methodology and your mindset around this, then you can be able to really communicate really complex ideas simply to people um, and make something that people really, really enjoy. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I remember a quote, I don't know who it's by, um, and it said that a piece of art is never completed, it's merely abandoned. <laughs> and it sounds a bit <laughs> cynical and pessimistic, but I think that it's almost, almost true. And uh, sometimes when, uh, when when I compose, uh, you have to realize, okay, it's enough. If if you proceed beyond this point, it's diminishing returns. There's nothing nothing of value to be gained after this. And I think a lot of that logic translates in some of the SEO work that we do. Is that at, at one point, uh, if you go beyond what we do, um, it's going to start um, going into you know SEO hygiene and not so much SEO value. Mm. Um, what a what a an absolute uh, delight, Nick, to uh, be able to talk to you for an hour. Uh, it's too bad we can't just you know drink coffee or something and be face to face, but it is what it is. Um, uh, I hope in the future we'll be able to to do that. And to, until then, um, I'll look forward to having you as a guest, uh, perhaps on some uh, some other topic. How does that sound? I would love that. <laughs> and. Awesome. Um, you know, when, when I think about enterprise level SEO, um, there are so many, there is, there are so many rabbit warren um, details to go into, like creating your own tools because you've got the time, like having um, whole teams um, around like specific types of fixes. Um, it can be really, really fun um, with clients that really understand what that's going to be able to do for you. Um, so like maybe even having like some of the more granularity of those types of topics, um, you know, we can go through and explore those, but when thinking about like just the challenges of enterprise level SEO, again, for me personally, that comes all the way back to the, the mentality and the methodology of how you can be able to explain concept things really, really simply. 100%. And also organize I almost, it. <laughs> I almost for, forgot one thing because you and in your cool violin and the whole setup i wanted to be as cool as you so i got myself a tesla coil oh whoa yes oh whoa that's so awesome connected it to my little behringer and i wanted to show you what it does can you wow. see this connect the lfo I haven't played with one of those since uni. <laughs> <laughs> have I have I notched oh up in the cool level now, or have I just gone tanked in the nerdy pits? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I I live I live for the nerdy. I live for um, being able to go in and do like just science experiments. Um, yes. And 
like I said, um, like <laughs> I see all the experiments that you do with your daughter, all, all like like all the science experiments, like they're so cool. And I'm so jealous that I really, really wish that like when I was growing up, I would have the ability to be able to have these things like not only at my disposal, but actually build that from scratch. Because you guys built a radio from scratch or no, you actually built um, a, it was, um, a little uh, synthesizer, a, little a synthesizer, synthesizer from scratch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was a. It was a kit. It was a kit. So it was more of a, a soldering exercise and uh, following the diagrams and everything. But um, she made it. You know, she made it. It was. Uh, it was good to see a, a, a small kid have so much uh, um, persistence to be able to complete such a mm -hmm. task. In fact, what what nobody knows. They saw the video. What nobody knows is that it was me who soldered it on the wrong side of the PCB. <laughs> <laughs> she did it right i mucked it up <laughs> i was showing it to her i'm like bugger uh, so i had to uh, i had to unsolder it but it was a it was a six um uh, six pin integrated circuit so i i i didn't have the suction thing so it was a real challenge to get it out because by the time you melt one side at one uh, set of legs um and yeah. you start melting the other set the the other the other one gets solid already so it's really hard to pull it out so i had to kind of like stretch it out it was so embarrassing. She laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> but but that, you know what? Like through through um, trial and error, that's where that's where we learn the most. <laughs> Whether or not there are our mistakes or someone else's, it's a little process of learning. I love that though. I I used to once upon a time I used to be an engineer and I used to love building things and pulling things apart and rebuilding them. Um, so I I just I love just the creativity that comes in like with STEM. So yeah, keep, keep it up. Um, yeah. It just gives me life and it's so wholesome. We'll do it next time you're in Brisbane. I'll get some liquid nitrogen. We'll geek out with superconductors. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs>